Okay, so we're gonna do a little uh, choke trio series that um, I was reviewing this morning. Let me borrow you. So we're gonna do three different chokes. First one's gonna be arm and guillotine. No, all guillotine strangles, front head locks. So the first one's gonna be our arm and guillotine. Once I lock this under, I'm gonna lay towards his head so I can roll his head, his chin into his chest. Once I lock my guard, I'm gonna roll this guy all the way through. Okay, I wanna take his chin and roll his head under. <clears throat> right now we're reviewing a, uh, a three system attack for different guillotines. The guillotines of an arm in, an arm out, and a high elbow guillotine. Different ways of adjusting, really based on how you initially grab the grips for it. Um, my opinion, when it comes to strangles, once you understand the mechanics of why the strangle actually works, your application completely changes and the way you squeeze it uh, changes everything for you. Guys, now we're gonna go over the defense, right? Because we, we can all agree that getting stuck in a, in a strangle from somebody who actually understands the strangle mechanics sucks. The first thing I have to do is once he goes for an arm out guillotine, I need to stop the choke first. Boom, over the shoulder. Now. The next thing that's really important for me to do, this is a kind of a combination defense and counter attack. I'm gonna come across the shoulder and I'm gonna shoot this hand straight through his body as I drive forward. He can't finish this choke now, go ahead and finish it. It's gonna be tough. So I'm gonna lock this pressure. This is key. This locks his wrist so he cannot let go of my head. Okay, this hand cross faces hard. I'm gonna gable grip here. There's about a, two inches of space right here. I'm gonna remove that by pulling my hands down. Boom. I try to up, I'm gonna flex, boom. There's this, he opens that guard. I step. This allows me to lock my hip, look at this. I don't keep space here. I'm gonna lock my hip in, rotate. Fix the space and I'm gonna flex this bicep that's already on the karate and I'm gonna drive my head and shoulder through the, him to the floor. We're working different variations of ways to defend the guillotine. Uh, one of my favorite ways of using a guillotine defense is by applying a Von Flu choke. It's great if I can teach just the Von Flu, but we have to understand mechanically why the choke actually works and what we're trying to achieve with it. And majority of the time, it comes from a, an, an application of a counter to somebody applying a, a guillotine strangle to you. So we have to understand the mechanics of the strangle, we have to understand the mechanics of why it works, how to defend it, and our entry into the Von Flu uh, from that position. I don't want to see anybody sitting on their ass. Here we go. I feel really comfortable. I feel like I've worked everything I needed to. It's just like implementing it once I get in the cage, being calm, just knowing I know what to do once I get in there, being calm, letting all my nerves just settle in and just being myself once I get in there. Just being here, just being at the gym, working hard, chilling with all the boys at the gym, and just literally just working hard every day, just having that main focus, coming in here, just working hard, grinding with my team, and always should be good from there going into a fight because I know everybody in here, they give me hard, good work, so it's just like I get the good work here, now it's just time to implement it into the fight. So always should be always comfortable going into the fights. I'm feeling so excited for this fight. It's been like like a four-year delay since I last fought, so I'm, like, I'm really excited. Like, so it's like the beginning, like the build-up from the beginning of camp till now, I'm like so ready to go in. I'm just like, I'm ready to fly out. And, and fight. It's time to go. It's time to go. It's it's my time. Like I have to. Like it's my time to go in. It's my time to get this get this through and get this over with and fight and fight this girl. And right when I step in, I'm like, okay, it's it's go time. There's no there's no absolutely no turning back. I have to get to, I have to get through this. Let's get this let's get this over with. That's that's what my that's what my main thing is too. It's like I just have to make sure that I'm I'm calm. But I'm also, but I'm also present with what's happening. I'm like, okay, I'm here. 
everything else that's going on, that's that's the least of my worries. I'm present right now with what's going, what's going on and what's happening in front of me too. I am extremely excited. You know, it will be my first MMA fight, actual fight. Like I've been doing a lot of wrestling, jujitsu. Uh, I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. So, you know, it's uh, it's finally in fruition. The opponent doesn't really matter. You know, I'm only I'm there to to uh, to fight. That's that's it. Yeah, it doesn't matter how big he is, no matter how tall he is, you know, how skilled he is. You know, I, I all I have to do is worry about myself. All the fights that we're walking into this weekend have the potential to be extremely tough fights. Uh, JJ is fighting a really, really solid wrestler uh, who looks pretty good on his back. Veronica's fighting a girl who has a lot of kickboxing experience. Uh, she's a blue belt in jiu-jitsu, very heavy on top. She's a judo-based uh, background fighter, so she's she's a big girl. She's got a lot of strength. And then Nico's fighting a guy who's got really solid boxing. So each fight is not gonna be easy. You know, I, I do believe that we're gonna come home 3-0, but if our guys aren't showing up 100% mentally, it's very possible we could come home 0-3 as well. It really comes down to how they show up fight night, and I think with the preparations that they've done, all of them are ready to go to war. It just really it comes down to how they check in each moment of the fight. The amateur level is the stage to try new things, to explore the possibilities of what are what are what are what you are capable in there. Um, when you're in there, all the comfortability disappears, and on this stage, these guys get such a great opportunity to not only fight outside of their comfort zone of their city, but to travel and fight. Because eventually, if you're gonna make a career out of this, that's something that's gonna be a, a very big part of it. You're not gonna just be in your backyard. You're not gonna sleep in your bed. You're gonna have to travel, go to uncomfortable places. And let's be honest, when you travel as an athlete or as a fighter, you are never being brought in to win. Every time you travel, you're gonna go fight some phenom or some star or some big name from that city or state and you are always being brought in to lose. You are going against the odds every time. So, but if you're banking on you and you've done the work, it's gonna be an exciting night and just have fun. And as odd as it sounds, enjoy the moment that it actually happens. Whether it's one minute of a fight or 15 minutes, enjoy the time that you're in there.